We've been on a, a series now for a few weeks called True Witness. True Witness. And I want us to continue with it. And this is our text here in Acts, the first chapter and the eighth verse. Acts 1 8. It says, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost, ghost is an old English word for spirit, after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You'll receive power after the Holy Spirit's come upon you. And, and this power is to what effect? To what end? Witness. You'll be witnesses. Witnesses unto me. Now, uh, the Living Bible says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you'll receive power to testify about me with great effect. Well, that's what a witness does, is testify. Hmm? And who are you testifying about? Jesus. And are you testifying just empty, powerless words? No, with great effect. Right? You'll receive power, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, your testimony will have great effect. Great effect. In fact, I don't know if you knew it or not, we, we've gotten into this already. The devil is afraid of your testimony. Amen. It's the truth. Yes. It's the truth. You are a serious threat. Your testimony is a serious threat to the power of darkness covering the earth. Because darkness cannot overcome light. When light comes out and people see light and people hear light, if they'll believe it and they'll receive it, all the darkness, all the devils in hell can't keep them from getting saved, can't keep them from getting free. And so the enemy's, one of his main priorities is covering up the truth, silencing the witness, silencing the message, but he just can't do it. Because greater is he Amen. that's in us Amen. than he that's in the world. Right. Said out loud and, and know it's true. My testimony, my, testimony, my, witness, my witness is powerful, is powerful in the earth. In the earth. Amen. Yes. It's powerful. Is that in line with this scripture? Yes. You'll receive power after the Holy Spirit's come upon you. Power to testify about me with great effect. The Weist translation puts it like this. Weist says, you'll receive power of the kind which God has. Well, it'd have to be if it's the Holy Spirit, yeah. right? right? And exerts after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be those who testify of what they have seen and experienced my witnesses both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria to the end of the earth. Amen. I'm telling you, your witness of what the Lord has done for you is far more important and far more powerful than you probably have realized. Amen. I know I didn't, I knew a little bit about it, but I didn't realize uh, it's as important as I do now. It's grown in me. My eyes have been open to it. And what we have seen is that not everybody is called to preach. That's right. Not everybody is called to teach. In fact, uh, James talks about that. Not many of you should be teachers. And, and 1 Corinthians talks about are all prophets, are all uh, apostles, are all, well, the answer is no. No. In fact, percentage-wise, most of the body of Christ is not a preacher or a teacher. And not, not anointed to do that, not called to do that, not supposed to do that. And yet there's been this confusion that when people hear about witnessing, they think that means I'm supposed to go try to preach to somebody. And because of that, people, a lot of folks think, well, I, I can't, I don't know what to say. I don't know what verses to use. I'm not a preacher. And so they never even try. But then they feel bad because they feel like, well, I'm supposed to be witnessing. 
And then sometimes people, they work up the, the gumption to go to try it. And, and they try to put them some scriptures together and try to, uh, to get them a little evangelistic message together. And they lose their place and they forget their verses yeah. and they stumble around. And it's just a bad experience. And they think, well, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, that's not what he said to do. Wit, being a witness, testifying, is not the same thing as preaching and teaching. What does it mean? We read, we read the Weiss translation. Testifying of what you have experienced the Lord has done for you. Amen. You're, a, you're an eyewitness. Yes. You were there when he saved you. Amen. You were there when you were born again. Yes. Right? You were there when you were filled with the Spirit. Yeah. You were there when He healed your body, yeah. when He healed your baby, yeah. when He paid your bills. Yeah. You were there. Yeah. And nobody can tell you it's not true. You were there. Right. It happened oh. to you. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there are situations, uh, you know, when things will come up on the job, uh, in the neighborhood, uh, uh, you know, in the marketplace, in the grocery store, wherever it might be. You don't need to feel like you have to go around trying to preach an evangelistic message to everybody or, or trying to tell people what your uh, doctrines are, what your doctrinal positions are, what our church believes. Most people don't care and don't want to hear all that. Hmm? And especially if you're not anointed to preach it or teach it. <laughs> it might not be clear on it anyway. But I tell you what does have power. You may not be called or anointed to teach or to preach the word. But you are, every one of us are anointed to give our testimony. Every one of us. There will be times and situations where the Lord will prompt you. Hmm? Tell them what I did for you. Hmm? And this gets away from hearsay, yeah. from theory, yeah. from doctrine. This is you yeah. talking about what you know. Yeah. You yeah. saw it. You heard it. You yeah. experienced yeah. it. Yeah. It happened to you. Yeah. 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 And when you tell it in honesty and you tell it in humility and people see your eyes and they hear the tone yeah. and whether they want to admit it or not, they know it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Then somebody else comes on the scene. Amen. Somebody else beside you comes on the scene and backs it up. <laughs> Power to testify. Power to be a witness. Go with me, please. In the scriptures to... Um, Let's see, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. We've touched on this in previous uh, messages, but I want us to review it just a little bit and then go further with it. That the Lord confirms his truth and he confirms it himself. Did you know you are the light of the world? Amen. Jesus said so. Hmm? You're here for just a little while and you're in the world but you're not of the dark world. You know most of the world, I'm, I'm talking about people on the planet. Most of the billions of people living on the planet right now are either dead or asleep wow. spiritually. Yeah. Most of the billions of people. Uh, they're alive physically, but you can be alive physically and dead spiritually. Yeah. And there's some people, they're not dead spiritually, but they're asleep. They've been born again, but they're sound asleep. How many of when you're sound asleep, you haven't got a clue what's going on? <laughs> right? And you, you take a person that's in a deep, deep sleep and lay them beside a dead person, and especially from a distance. 
They look the same. You got the same things happening. Nothing. Right? You believe it's true? Most of the planet, most of the people on the planet are, are either spiritually dead or spiritually asleep. How do, you, how do you get from being spiritually dead? You must be born again. Right? Amen. But not only uh, do you need to be born again, you need to be awake. Yes. And the scripture also said, awake thou that sleepest, yes. and Christ will give you light. Amen. And in this dark world, you and I are lights, and we're supposed to be light. And a big part of this light is our testimony. Amen. It's our witness. Yes. When it's truth and it's right, and the anointing is on it, it's light coming out of our mouth Amen. into a dark world. Amen. And somebody could hear it and believe that God is real yes. and that God is good. Yes. And they could receive him for themselves. And they could have the same kind of things happening in their life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Mark 16, 20, notice this. They went forth and preached everywhere. And the Lord did what? He worked with them and did what? Confirming. Confirming the word with signs following. This is the Lord's method of operation. When we say what he says, we say his words. And it really is his words. He comes with it and behind it and over it and confirms it. Amen. This is powerful. Yes, it is. Then it gets bigger than me and you. Yes, right? Yes. He confirms his word. In Hebrews 2, you don't have to turn there, but just listen to it. Hebrews 2 verse uh, 3, Hebrews 2 and 3 talks about the great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him is, is God in the confirming business. Verse 4, God also doing what? Bearing them witness. How? With signs and wonders, with different miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. All this was what? Confirmation. Confirmation and God himself bearing witness with what was said. The Holy Spirit is witness. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 1, 6 that I, I mentioned to you earlier. I'm going to read a, several verses. And, and if you can find them quick, okay. If not, just look up at the screen. But 1 Corinthians 1, 6, he says, Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. The testimony of Christ, verse, the message Bible says, verified in your lives. Verified. Verified. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth and he is witness to the truth. And when we tell the truth and the truth about God's things, the Holy Spirit's ministry in the earth is to confirm it. Amen. To confirm it. To verify. To establish it. And this confirmation is what the world is hungry for. They, the world, whether they say it or not, the unbelievers, they're hungry for reality of God. Many of them would like to, they'd like to see something, that hear something that would be some evidence of God. Now, you can't come in unbelief and go, well, prove to me, God, that you exist, and I'll believe. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. Right. You can't tell him how to do it. He said, believe, and you'll see something. Yeah. You say, well, show me something, I'll believe. <laughs> not going to work that way. It's not going to work that way. He's God. You, you just... You, He's great. You don't tell him how to do it. And, you know, it should be obvious to an honest person. All this did not just spring into existence by itself. Hmm? But 
If you don't, you know, the reason why people want to believe other things is because they don't want there to be a real God that they have to submit to. <laughs> they want to do their own thing. Right? They don't, and, and so if you don't want it to be true, you'll make up something else to believe. Amen. Something that's Godless. With, that has no God, no Creator, no Savior, no Lord. Lord means somebody's my boss. Yes. Yes. I have to answer to somebody else. But it's true anyway, whether you want to believe it or not. Look with me, go with me to the book of John, please. Book of John. And let's look in John You will find this, this word numerous times in the scriptures from the Old Testament, more than once in the New Testament, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Anybody heard that before? It's, it's, it's several times in the Old Testament. It's several times in the New Testament. In the mouth of of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Now, what does establish mean? Well, we're talking about verification. We're talking about confirmation. It, it is supportive evidence. If somebody says in a court of law, what happened in this situation? And somebody says, well, I was there. They're an eyewitness. What happened? I was there. I saw this. And this happened, and then this happened. Well, what would be some of the best confirmation you could have? Somebody else was there, right? And so they testify, what happened? I was there, and that's right. This happened, and then this happened. And then you had another witness come, right? You were there too, I was there. What happened? Yeah, just what they said. This happened, and then this happened, just like this. Well, if anybody cares about the truth... And you've got multiple eyewitnesses that everybody knows not liars and reliable. This thing ought to be settled. Right? We got multiple witnesses confirming the same truths. It should be established. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Well, Jesus referred to this. Jesus referred to this in John 8. Are you there? In John 8, uh, the, the leaders of the Jews, rulers of the Jews were um, railing at Jesus. They said, you testify about yourself, so your testimony is not true. Um, but in John 8, verse 17, he said, it's written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. This is what he's talking about, this confirmation, this backup. And he said, verse 18, I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bears witness of me. I got another witness. <laughs> Who was his other witness? The Father. Now, this also uh, shakes up the, um, the oneness theology. Jesus must not be the Father. He refers to himself and the Father as two. That's right. Just a thought. <laughs> I'm one that bears witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bear witness. Of somebody said, well, the Bible says they're one. They are. He also prayed that we would be one. Are we going to merge into one cosmic consciousness one day and lose all separate identity? No. No, you're going to be you. I'm going to be me. Yeah, yeah. So I say, well, we recognize one another there. If you recognize them here. <laughs> yes, you'll be you. You're not going to change into an angel. <laughs> That'd be a demotion. Yeah, it, <laughs> it would be. You're going to be you. Thank you, Lord. Minus the junk. Woo, glory to God. Yeah. We're going to be happy about that. 
But uh, you and I are not going to be one person. We're going to be one in mind, heart, purpose, focus, Amen. work, right. plan, right? Amen. Unity. Amen. Not one person. Now, uh, he, he, he refers to the multiple witness. If you, if you skip back, go back to the fifth chapter now. He brings in additional witness. John 5 and 30. Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. If that was true of him, certainly true of you and I. As I hear, I judge. My judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Now this is very significant. We're going somewhere. We're going to get to a, a place that a, that a lot of folks uh, need, need some adjustment. And, and all of us can make adjustment on it. Did you hear this? I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Verse 31, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bears witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. You sent unto John and he bore witness to the truth. He's saying John is a witness, right? John, in fact, there was a time when John was known widely much more so than Jesus. And at the height of John's ministry, he introduced Jesus to everybody. He baptized him. You remember that? And then he said to his disciples, everybody, this is the Lamb of God. Didn't he? Is that a testimony? This is him. I told you there was one coming. Because they kept asking John. John was so popular and his ministry was so powerful that, that people came to him and said, are you the one? Are you the anointed one that was going to come? Are you him? And he said, no. How many know you not only need to know who and what you are, you need to know what you're not. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Is that right? He said, no, I'm not him. I'm not the one. But He's coming after me, and I'm not worthy to stoop down and, and untie his sandal, but he's coming. I'm baptizing you with water, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And then on that day, he announced, this is him. This is the one I was talking about. This is the one I said. There comes one after me that's greater than me. The, the latchet of his shoe, I'm not worthy to stoop down and unloose. He's the one I was telling you about that baptizes with the Holy Spirit in fire. Amen. He's the one. He's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Is he testifying? Yeah. Is he testifying? Yeah. And Jesus said, John is my witness. And he's bearing witness to what? The truth. The truth. The truth. The truth. Keep reading. But I received not testimony from man. These things I say that you might be saved. Now, very important. Was Jesus looking for men to confirm him? No. He wasn't. Hmm? No. Are many looking for men to confirm them yes. today? Oh, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. But it's the wrong place to look. Hmm? You don't want confirmation of man. You want confirmation of God. Don't you? Hold your place there. Don't leave there. But put up on the screen for us. 2 Corinthians 10, 18. It says, Not he that commends himself is approved, but whom the Lord commends. The Living Bible says, when someone boasts about himself and how well he's done, it doesn't count for much. But when the Lord commends him, that's different. <laughs> Somebody say, that's different. That's di the complete English says, you may brag about yourself, but the only approval that counts is the Lord's approval. 
And how does he approve? How does he add his witness to? By the, by the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, including miracles, yes. signs, yes. wonders. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what you want. Amen. And in so doing, here, here's the key. In so doing, he'll not just be confirming you. But confirming him yes. in you. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. So important to distinguish. Jesus was not looking for people to confirm him. Even when good people bore witness of him, he said, I'm, I'm not looking for that. Right? Let's look at it again. You're there in John 5 still? You sent unto John, verse 33, he bore witness to the truth, but I received not testimony from man. These things I say that you might be saved. He, he said, I said that for your benefit. You think a lot of him. He testified about me. Do you remember that? That's right. But then he goes to say, but that's not, that's not what I'm going by. Amen. That's not my confirmation. No. He was a burning and a shining light. And you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Can you see the, the, the overlap of light and witness? Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. What's he talking about? John was a burning and a shining light. Well, his witness. Yes, he, uh -huh. he boldly proclaimed. He didn't care who saw him. Uh -uh. Who heard? Right? right? He boldly proclaimed who the Lord was, what truth was, what right was. But verse 36, Jesus said, but I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Amen. The works Amen. are testifying. Amen. How many know healing testifies? Yes. When your needs are met, testifies. Is that right? When you're delivered and set free from bondages, habits, addictions, oppression, depression, that preaches. Just you showing up free and clean preaches. People can look at you clear-eyed. My Bible talks about the madman of Gadara. Man, what a mess he was in. Running through the cemetery naked cutting himself. He was the first nudist goth. It's true. It's true. He was, he was uh, infatuated with death. See, that's wrong. Everything black, everything cemetery and tombstone and hearse that's not an acceptable hobby. <laughs> it shows you got problems. You're yielding to wrong things. We're not darkness. We're not the children of death. We're light. Hallelujah. We're the children of life. Death, there's nothing beautiful about death. Yeah, you heard me. Amen. Death is an enemy. Is right. 1 Corinthians 15 says so. It's an enemy. It's the last enemy that will be put underfoot. There's coming a time when there's going to be no more dying. Amen. Nothing's ever going to die again. Amen. We're looking forward to it. Yes. So don't magnify death. No. It's, not, it's not good. It's not right. And you know, running around without your clothes. <laughs> Out in the open, out in public. Bad idea. <laughs> you don't support nudists' right to express their freedoms? Well, they're messed up. They need to get saved and get right. Put some clothes on. Come join us. 
You need to be more open-minded. No, they need to get free. Amen. It's either right or it's not. It's either truth or it's not. That's right. No, no. Uh, a, a lot of folks are, are, are contributing to problems in their children's life, their teenagers' life, but by, by acting like all these things are okay. Well, yeah, just express your... No, they're yielding to wrong spirits. And the further they go, the worse it's going to get. Yeah. Right. This is how people lose their minds. Yeah. It's not okay. No. He did get set free. And when he did get set free, next time they saw him, he was clothed and in his right mind. And everybody in that whole area in several counties, when they saw the madman of Gadara sitting there clothed and in his right mind, that's preaching to everybody. Just him sitting there with some clothes on able to hold a, 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 an intelligent conversation with you is preaching to everybody. And you, don't, you couldn't blame him. He said, Lord, I'm going to travel with you now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, wherever you go, I'm going. And the Lord said, no, no. I want you to go back to your people. I want you to go back to your home folks. And I want you to tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and had compassion. What te what's he telling him? What's he telling him? Go be a witness. Go testify at what's God planning on doing. He's planning on backing him up by the power of the Holy Spirit when he tells what God has done for him. God's going to whisper to other people that's listening, and I'll do it for you too. I'll, I'll save you too. I'll set you free too. I'll heal you too. And if and when they believe it, here will come the Holy Spirit to manifest it, to bring it to pass. There's power in it. And it's all connected with giving you testimony. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Keep reading. Jesus said, I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which your Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And, verse 37, the Father himself which has sent me has borne witness of me. He said, uh, I'm a witness. John the Baptist is a witness. The works that you see, all these healings, all these deliverances, these miracles, those are testifying to you. Yeah. And the Father himself. Yes. Now how many know an honest person in the light of all this evidence, mm -hmm. irrefutable evidence, mm -hmm. is going to say, well that's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I'm not fighting it anymore. Yeah. But see a dishonest person doesn't care if it's true or not. They want to do what they want to do. And they want to believe something that will support what they want to do. They don't care where, what's true or what's not. you got to love the truth Amen. more than what you want. Yeah. And if the truth shows you up and corrects you and even makes you look bad, you need to say, so be it. Give me the truth. I will repent. I will change. But give me the truth. Amen. Do you love the truth? Yes. Sit out loud, out loud. I love the truth. I love the truth. Give me the truth. No matter what. Glory to God. Give me the truth. Glory to God. Now go with me, please, to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, the second chapter. We see how the Spirit operates throughout this book of Acts. We, we see it in the ministry of Jesus. And we see it continue through the book of Acts. Now, the title that men gave to this book is the Acts of the Apostles. Men gave it this title. And it wasn't written in chapter and verse. The, the titles that you see up at the top of the page and, and for each chapter, don't assume those are inspired. <laughs> men put those in there. But the, the text itself, the letters, obviously is. I think you could better call it perhaps the acts of the Holy Spirit yes. through the church. Yes. But I don't know that it needs a title anyway. Right. 
But that's what's going on because it wasn't just apostles that you read about. You read about Philip the evangelist. You read about Agabus the prophet. You read about disciples that nothing was said about any ministerial call, but uh, uh, disciples that heard from the Lord and, and went and did something and God showed up and manifested himself. Right? But it's the Holy Spirit manifesting himself. But it's in connection with his people saying what he told them to say and testifying and witnessing of his reality, of his truth, of what he said to say and do. In Acts 22, he reminds them, he said, you men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Now we've made this statement, but I want to make it again. We don't do miracles by God. He does things by us. Big difference. Big difference. And he doesn't confirm us. He confirms him in us, through us. Now, important to say because many people are trying to get God to confirm what they decided to do. Hmm? <laughs> what they decided to do, what they decided to say. And, and sometimes people have heard a few things about faith principles, and, it, and, and these principles are true, of course, but then they leave off some very vitally important things like being led by the Spirit yeah. and praying yeah. and hearing from Him. Yes. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. So people just say things and are going to claim things and going to do things just off the top of their head that they came up with and then they go about endeavoring to get God to confirm it. And that's why many are disappointed. Many don't see success. Because he's not obligated to confirm just anything and everything you and I come up with. Thank God. What a mess it would be. Huh? Let me just give you an example. You're a big fan of this baseball team. I'm a big fan of the opposing baseball team. <laughs> They're having a game. I'm believing in saying that my team's going to win. You're believing in saying that your team's going to win. <laughs> huh? I'm trying to get God to confirm what I'm believing in saying. You're trying to get God to confirm what you're believing and saying. You think it puzzles him? Do you think he says, whoa, they're both believing me. Which one do I confirm? I don't know. He's maybe a little bit stronger in faith today. I don't know. Now there he goes. He, he topped the, the list right then. Let's look at the faith meter. No, no. God is not moved by the trivialities of men. No, with me or not. Yes. What did he say? See, Jesus said, I didn't come to do my own will. How could the Father confirm everything Jesus said? Everything Jesus preached, everything Jesus taught, everything. How could he? Because he only said what the Father gave him to say. He only did what the Father showed him to do. He wasn't doing his own thing. He wasn't trying to get the Father to confirm him. That's why he started out that passage we read. I can of my own self do nothing. Can you see what we're talking about? We need, to, we need to watch about trying to get God to confirm what we decided to do. Amen. 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 
Many folks, are not, they're not praying enough. They're not seeking God enough. They've learned a few faith principles. And so they just decide to springboard and confess something. Hmm? A lot of folk are too quick to pray as far as believing we receive it and too quick to say. Your first order of business about many things should be inquire of the Lord. That's right. Inquire of the Lord. Ask Him, yes. what do I need to do about this situation? What, which, which way do I need to go? So I said, well, stand on the Word. Well, that's great advice, but it's a big book. I said, it's a big book. Where, which verse do I? Well, just, just any verse. Just pick one. No, no, no. You've got the author of the book living on the inside of you. And he will show you what part of it applies to you on a Tuesday afternoon at the workplace or at school or dealing with your kids or your spouse. Yes. But instead of just deciding you're going to say something and you're going to do something, and come on God and back me up in this now. <laughs> How many know this is happening all over the place? And it's why people are being disappointed and being confused. No, we don't try to get him to confirm us. We go to Him. We submit to His greatness. We submit to His Lordship. We submit to His Holy Spirit and His Holy Word. We say, Lord, what do you say about this? What do you say about this? Which way do we go? What do we do? What do we say? What do we believe? What do we do? And you may not get it the first hour. I'm not talking about you have to stay on your knees all day and night, but you ask Him. You look to Him. And then you continue to check in your heart. You continue to expect as you get up and go to work and come home, as you go to the grocery store, you make your bed, you come back. And it may be a few days. Some things may be a few weeks. Some things may be longer, but you just keep looking to him and believe in him. And if you keep looking to him, how many know the Bible said, ask. It'll be given. Seek. And you'll find. Knock. And it'll be open to you. And you keep on doing that, it'll come to you. Uh, it'll come to you, and you'll see you go, oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's what I say about this, that's what I believe, that's what I do. And then, when you start saying what he said, and believing what he said to believe, and doing what he said to do, here he will come. I said, here he will come, and he will confirm it, he will verify it, he will back it up, he will do it. Thank you, Lord. And it'll be a witness. Yes. And then you can go tell somebody else about something else that he did. For you. But it's not him confirming you. It's him confirming him in you. Can you see this, saints? Very important. Very important. <laughs> There's a lot of answers in this, isn't there? A lot of answers right here. God never let anybody down. But there's a lot of folks confused about who, who's boss. <laughs> you don't tell him how to do it. You let him tell you. Even when you know it's his will, there's still the way to do it, the way to go about it. You know, uh, uh, David, King David, practiced this continuously have you ever read the scriptures about his life and his walk with the Lord? How many times it says he inquired of the Lord? Yeah. That means he asked. Yeah. You know, pride assumes. Yeah. Humility asks. That's a good phrase right there. Pride assumes. Humility asks. Even when you think you know, it doesn't hurt to ask. Hmm? And if he tells you what you thought you already knew, well, it's just confirmation. Yeah. But, you know, numerous times when the enemy would come out against them, David would inquire of the Lord, shall I go up against them? And the Lord would answer him, go up against them, do it like this. And this happened repeatedly, repeatedly. And so after a while, you'd get to thinking, well, I know how to do this. There's the enemy. We've done this before. Just go do this, 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 and this. And, and no, but every time he'd still inquire of the Lord. And a good thing he did because this time he inquired of the Lord. The Lord said, no, don't go up against them. Go around behind the mulberry bushes and do this. 
Well, it's the same type of situation, but a different direction for this time to get the right result. You cannot substitute anything for hearing from God. We've got to hear from Him. You can't separate walking by faith and exercising faith from being led by the Spirit. We need Him every hour. We need Him every, every day and night, don't we? And, and when things come up, inquire of the Lord. Ask Him, Lord, what do I do on this? What do I do? How many know He always has the answer? He is the answer. Can you say glory to God? Go with me. You're, you're in the book of Acts. Go with me on over to the uh, 10th chapter. The 10th chapter of Acts. Before we get into this, I'm going to read to you 1 John 5. 5. You don't have to turn there. You stay there in Acts. 1 John 5. 5. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe that? Then you are a world overcomer. Hmm? You are. Me? Yeah. You. You don't feel like an overcomer. Well, quit, quit checking with your feelings. Quit checking with that. Believe this. Verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that does what? Bear witness. Bears witness. Why? Because the Spirit is, is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Now, all this is talking about testifying, witnessing. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. There are three that do what? Bear witness witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. These three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. Did you know that God on more than one occasion, spoke out of heaven with an audible voice and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. What is that? That's him testifying. The almighty testified. Do you accept his testimony (laughs) as true and right? You know, a lot of people haven't. A lot of people haven't. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. This is the witness of God which he testified of his son. He that believes on the son of God has the witness in himself. You got the witness in you? You got the truth in you? You got the spirit in you? You got the witness right on the inside of you. He that believed not, God has made him a liar because he believes not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life and this life is in his son. He that has the son of God has life. He that has not the son of God has not life. People don't know when they reject Christianity, they don't know they're looking God in the face and going, I don't accept your testimony. The creator of the heavens and earth. I'm glad he gave you and me enough sense to say, yes, yes sir. Yes. You say he's the one, he's the one. Right? right. <laughs> and he is and always will be. Thank you, Lord. Now, in Acts 10, you see such a perfect example of the Holy Spirit confirming the witness. Verse 38, well, let me back up just a little bit. The Lord appeared and spoke to uh, Cornelius, and, uh, who was a good man but not a uh, born-again man, and told him to send people to Peter's house. Well, he didn't know who Peter was or where Peter was, and the God, re- God revealed it to him by a word of knowledge, supernaturally. Yes. So he sent people from his house to the right address. He didn't know who Peter was or where he lived, but God showed him and told him. These kind of things should be happening in our midst. Yes, they, should. they are for some, but they should be happening a lot more. And uh, anyway, he did it. 
And God had to minister to Peter before they got there because normally they would not have gone to a Gentile's house. Must let's go inside and, and fellowship or eat with them. Must let's preach to them. It just wasn't done. But God caused uh, Peter to fall into a trance and showed him, you know, the sheet with the things in it and said what God has called clean. Don't you call common? And about this time, these people showed up at the door. God has good timing, doesn't he? And he said, you go with them, nothing doubting. So he did. And uh, man, he, he is breaking so many rules. <laughs> he, brought him, he brought him some witnesses. <laughs> he brought some people with him. He knew he's going to be called on the carpet about this. And he was. And it was a big deal. But God used it and straightened it out. And Cornelius came and met him. The place is packed. He's got all his friends and relatives there. And he told him about how the angel appeared to him and told him to send people to his house. That's how he found out his address. This is before Google. <laughs> Let me give you a, a little blip here. There are no computers in heaven. A computer to God, even, you know, the, the greatest mainframes of our day would be like an ox cart oh, yeah. to God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He'd have no use for such a primitive thing, including the internet. <laughs> he, do, he, he doesn't require that. He's beyond that. It's, it's good tools for us compared to what we used to have, because it used to, what we had was an ox cart. That was it. But, so we, we have stepped up some. But... Uh, can God reveal something to you without you spending all day searching and looking through 508,000 hits? Absolutely. <laughs> the reason I say this is because our generation has been trained through the arduous process of elimination, sifting through mounds of irrelevant data. That's right. That's right. Too much time. Hmm? And it is not the way of a spiritual man and woman. That's right. yeah. There's another way. It's called praying <laughs> and hearing from God and being led. And there's a lot of things you don't even need to make one search or one phone call. You just get it. That's it. Thank you, Lord. That's it. Get it and go do it. Save all that time and arrive without bloodshot eyes <laughs> and without missing all that sleep. <clears throat> Just another thought. But he shows up and Peter is, I know he's standing there thinking, what am I doing here in this Gentile's house? <laughs> and the man came and said, so we are all here to hear what God would tell uh, us through you. And it hit him. They expect me to preach. Right here. Right now. Because <laughs> they're all sitting there. <laughs> Floor is yours. And he starts off here in Acts 10. Was it verse, verse 36? Back up just a little bit. Let me, let me find my place here. He said the word, first of all, he, he said he had, you know, discerned that God was no respecter of persons. But he said, if you heard, you've heard the word that God sent to Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he's Lord of all. Hallelujah. Don't you like that phrase? Yeah. He's Lord of all. And he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Now have we heard about this before? The Holy Spirit and power. Yes. Does this belong to every child of God? Yes. In connection with their witness. Yes. He anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Amen. And we know from what Jesus said in John 5 and other places. Those works were also witness. Amen. That's right. That's right. Weren't they? Every healing was testifying. Amen. Every good thing God does in your life is a beacon. Yeah. 
It's a light. Hmm? Amen. Gives you a new car. That new car should preach. Right? Years ago, I've always liked sports cars. Years ago, I was able to get a new Corvette. Oh, man, I was so happy about it. And in those days, I was speaking sometimes uh, 15, 20 times a week. That's a lot. And so I, I was just constantly speaking uh, there at the Bible school and, and, uh, and some other things. And, and our neighbor boys came out when I got that car, and I'm washing it out in the driveway. They came out, and they said, oh, wow, that's a Corvette. That's a new Corvette. Wow, that's a Corvette. And, and one of the guys punched the other, uh, other kid and said, you won't believe what he does. I said, what? He's a preacher. <laughs> and the guys looked at him and said, what? You're a preacher? I said, yeah. I said, this is a church-going Corvette. This Corvette has been to church so many times, I pull out in the drive, it almost turns that way by itself. It's a church-going Corvette. <laughs> and, and without going into too much detail, that car sitting in the driveway there is preaching. It's preaching to those boys saying, God's a good God. You serve him, you can still have some good stuff and enjoy some things. You don't have to, uh, you know, be broke in order to serve God. He's a good God, right? Thing after thing after thing. How many know this building sitting here on this property, finished and paid for, is preaching? It's preaching. It's preaching. Every good thing God does in your life is a light and a witness and a testimony. And if anybody wants to know more about it, you are glad to tell them. That's right? right? <laughs> it should be common. But you know, the Bible said the goodness of God does what? It, the goodness and kindness of God leads and draws men and women to repentance. And when these good things are evidenced in your life and people go, wow, how did you get that? Wow, how did that happen? Wow, how, we men, you look so sick a couple of days ago. Look at you. You're the picture of health. What happened? And you say, would you like to know more? <laughs> Let me tell you what happened. Right? And it's time for you to testify. But here's the thing we're emphasizing today. While you're testifying, if it's really the truth and it's really right, the Holy Spirit testifies. He testifies to the truth. He confirms it with manifestations of power. So Peter is standing up preaching. And he's preaching about how God anointed Jesus. And he said, verse 39, what did he say? We are We're witnesses of all things which he did in the land of Jews and Jerusalem, whom they slew and they hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Is he testifying? He's testifying. He's not expounding some deep uh, doctrinal issue. He's saying, we saw him. He was really dead, right? When they took him off that cross, he was dead. But three days later, a bunch of people saw him. Yeah. I saw him. We ate with him. Yeah. We drank with him. After we buried him. <laughs> after he was dead. After we put him in the tomb. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it's he which is ordained of God to be the judge of, of the quick and the dead. To him give all the prophets what? Well, what's he talking about? This whole passage is witness, 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 I'm a witness. The works are a witness. The prophets were a witness that through his name, whoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. And I don't think he's through with his message, but the Holy Spirit's heard all he wants to hear. He jumps in. <laughs> Whilst Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all them which heard the word. Oh, somebody say glory to God. What's he doing? Huh? He's bearing witness. Here's another witness. Oh, and what a witness. 
I said, what a witness. He's confirming the truth that Peter just witnessed to. All these folks are sitting there. All these Gentiles sitting there listening, listening. Peter's preaching about Jesus. Peter's preaching about Jesus' healing ministry and all the good things that happened. And every, every, everything he's saying is these works say that he is the Lord. He is the Messiah. We saw him after he's raised from the dead. The prophets all said the same thing. Witness, witness, witness. And he's in the middle of a sentence. And the Holy Ghost says, and me too. Yeah. <laughs> me too. I say. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is God manifested in the flesh. I'm the one raised from the dead. I was there. Glory to God. Woo, hallelujah. And they didn't just hear it. They felt it. I said they didn't just hear it. They didn't just think, hmm, that's interesting. No, they went, whoo. Glory to God. Go over and blame in the sun of Karachi and Avidi. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Didn't they? That's right. The whole place. Yes. The whole place. Yeah. It happens in different ways, in different measures, in different manifestations. Not always the same way. But every time we're prompted to speak the truth and give our testimony, you need to be. Uh, checking over your shoulder. <laughs> right? You may get interrupted. Huh? And when you get through speaking and talking about it, then expect him to confirm it. Whether you see it all or whether you don't, expect him to confirm it. Sometimes it could be three days later while they're laying in their bed thinking about what you said to them. Spirit of God can just come right in there. Manifest to them. It can be in any number of things. It can be riding down the road in their car and it just move on their heart and they think, man, you know that's true. What they said, it's got to be true. It's got to be true. And they open up their heart and they pray a prayer. Here comes the Holy Spirit. Gets in the car with them. Gets in the chair with them. Right? Gets in the bed with them. Gets in the house with them. And confirms the word with signs following. Can you say amen, I believe it? Stand on your feet, everybody.